Greetings, all praise the king. Hail Selassie I. Why does the rich love to hate the poor? Fine, I recall from the first epistle of Paul to Timothy, chapter 6.10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Love, money. This is a kind of love. It makes people happy. Does that mean it equals righteousness? No. It equals evil. So therefore, if an alien were to come to the earth and you were to explain that most people agree, even the Pope of the Church of Rome that the love of money is the root of evil. Uh, then the alien may conclude that those that have the most money are the most evil. Now, what is evil? What constitutes or defines this behavior or this persona. Based on high faith as evident by high testimony of high scripture. Evil is of many attributes one of which is known to be oppression. Another word perhaps that needs definition. Well, who better to define what this word means other than those that are oppressed? Because if you ask the oppressor what is oppression, you might not get a straight answer. Now, as I've discussed, there is a particular structure This is known as rule of law, which enables the oppressor to oppress. And this being evident by the lifestyle of the so-called rich of people. The word so-called because I know I will to be not of worldly possession. And yet, this word mostly being referred to as those that have material power, let's say. Because the earthly wealth is not only measured in dollars. It is measured in assets, in servants, and so on. And was not measured in that instrument of capital until recently. But this word money being used in Timothy refers to wealth. And even the Christ had said that even to love the mammon of unrighteousness. And that word mammon 
being referred to as wealth, although I know it as as man and not human flesh, yet the spiritual existence of man that is separate from the spiritual existence of Ai Wei. Today man has come to believe himself to be supreme, to have earned his keep. He has just reward for his genius. Once man has become possessed, man no longer knows and no longer sees. Only through the Christ is man able to come to see. Is that parable of the certain ruler known as a scribe or a lawyer who had come to the Christ to tempt the Christ. Into confessing the Ayas command and the Christ had stated version that the highest command is to love and serve Lord and it was really the scribe who had spoken these words and the Christ said very well then go and do because well, these individuals in the old days were known as Sadducees and they had come to tempt the Christ on only rare occasions because most of the time they used their structure to they used their structure uh, to do their bidding and this was done through uh, what was the the rule of the land through the Pharisees because it was a Jewish kingdom and so therefore the Pharisees were the ones that were considered to be the authority and they used the scribes you know, to do their documentation and the same the way that the, the, the judges and the lawyers work and the modern court system. So it was actually these scribes and Pharisees that most of the time came to tempt the Christ. And on the particular incident, the Pharisee, or the scribe rather, had tempted the Christ. And as the Christ said, very well, go and do. And the scribe said, well, who is my neighbor? Because as the Christ as the scribe had stated the second command to serve your neighbor as yourself and so this is probably information that the scribe had gathered that was a component of the Christ testimony and so as these enforcement of Caesar rule exist today uh, to gather information um, and then they are going to present their questions you know with that information in mind and so having already known of the Christ ministry um, the man had the correct answer the Christ did not dispute he asking then who is our neighbor and the Christ giving the story of the Samaritan because the Levite, you know, had passed a by, and the men that rejected the sufferer were afraid, perhaps, in doubt, 
and it was that one that was rejected that came to be saved, known as the Samaritan, because the Samaritans were viewed in that community as rejected ones, like heathen. And it was the Christ ministry to bring all that chose to come. And as the oppressed will claim victory, the oppressed of the oppressed will claim victory, indeed. And even though this certain ruler had done those commands, that certain ruler was not willing to give all that he had as the Christ stated, when the enemy asked for your coat, give the enemy both your coats. How easy, easier for the needle to enter into than that man, you know, the camel to enter into the needle, rather. And those that lose their life for our sake shall gain. And so what is this losing? Is this, you know, strangulation? Um, or is it that you have the ability to gain and you choose not to because you know what impact that will have on the other? Because there is a relation now. This is why this exists as evil is because there is a relation like the scientific rule that says for every action there's a reaction well we didn't need newton to tell us this because the christ had already come and the christ had put it down um, that through fasting and prayer i and i will reach the gates and therefore I and I had have the power to heal, to prove man wrong, and that only through the Spirit. Christ had said, "If I come and perform no miracles, then believe I not." So at this moment, these people are looking to maintain because they have been blinded. Their eyes are shut. And because of that, they can no longer see. It's only the Christ now. That truth that can penetrate that barrier. See now, they're looking towards the Antichrist, which is their artificial intelligence. But they're saying this artificial intelligence, otherwise known as AI, is going to save them. It's going to save them. Because these people know better than anyone what they've done. So they choose to be blinded because it allows them to continue to live the way that they want to. That's why they come up with these things like the golden rule where they say do unto others as you would want them to do to you. So, and nowhere does it say that in the scripture. These are the, these are the laws of the Antichrist. Now why this is the Antichrist is because of all the development that has gone into this project, that this is an accumulation of interconnected 
processes. Processes. And these processes eventually became this. As I have stated, it's, it's the manifestation of idolatry. And the pinnacle of, because it comes to a point to, to that, for example, when the war happens, the military, for example, in Syria, the military is going to send foreign troops, the ISIS gang, and call it a covert war. They have not fired anyone. See, the military has grown, even though they've sent these foreign fighters to do their dirty work. Uh, they're growing, so they must be doing something. I, I mean, unless they just do nothing. Uh, but the chances are is that they're working for someone. The United States military, and uh, most, most of the militaries around the world. And they're doing their work. That the taxpayers, the people that you know, believe in this system, that, that love the, the United States, go out on the Fourth of July, fan their flags. They're, they're going to pay for the development for the corporations that are owned by foreigners. So, if if they were able to, if they learned in school how things work. Then they would, they would, they would know themselves. They would know that they're not patriotic. They're not patriotic. But if the capital is flowing into just base any kind of industrial areas, those industries are now affecting the judgment of people. And. The idea was to get people to serve the rich. It, it's not actually happened, it's not something new. It's been happening for many thousands of years. Uh, the Hebrews had escaped bondage uh, from the Egyptians. Uh, the Egyptians had changed hands. There was different faces. Uh, but there was always this element, you know, and they used people to build their temples for their gods, which is what really separates this class that today can be known as the world class. World class. Because they have these privileges, sometimes referred to as rights, but be careful because the police in the United States don't like that. But. They, 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 can, they can claim right because they actually do have the right and it's protected by their rule of law. And they have the people in place. That a lot of people are driven by incentives. And this incentive is status, uh, authority. They want to feel manly. So they get put into these positions that they don't actually have to get paid of much. Relative to most people, the oppressed, they do exceed. But enough to keep that incentive to form that middle protection barrier between the wealthiest and the oppressed. And this is like the basic, you know, governmental agencies. Be careful when we use that word government because it's a government for the wealthy and powerful are not a government for the oppressed. It's a government against the oppressed. So it's not our government. The original separatists come to this land before, but the, the wealthy uh, rulers from Britain had sent those infiltrators and disruptors to uh, destroy I weigh, and they formed their colony 
and began their slave trade, which polluted our name. They extracted the wealth. They have used it for incentives to dangle the plastic carrot that people chase. Pokemon Go, you see the people with the phones, like on the street corner, like almost every month. This is like they get a call and say, oh, there's something new. You can score points. It's an incentive. People think it's making their life worthwhile. They go out and they do the work for these Sadducee occult classes. Now, they are occultists because they work in secret. If, they're, if what they knew was common knowledge, then they would not be able to get away with what they get away with, which is crime. Of course, not underneath their rule, but underneath I way. It is called oppression. This is one of their crimes. Pedophilia runs rampant, and the list goes on. But we are focusing at the moment on this particular crime, which has become so outrageous. Just cruel to the point that, like, these folks now are barricading themselves within their communities because they realize they're going, they're going to be able to use their devices to reach people, affect their mind, and be able to get, get those people to do their work through their structure. And this is how the Christ being crucified because they, the Sadducee always claims that the people want this, that it's all about the people and the people rule because their structure is called democracy. And so even when the Christ was crucified, it was done of his own people, that he was crucified of his own tribe, and yet they didn't actually pull the trigger, so to speak, because that was so-called illegal underneath their rule. They still chose to believe that what they did was right, and that they served I way, in all I ways. And so the multitude, the multitude, ordered the crucifixion. Pontius Pilate played just as most of the judges uh, in the United States court system with the, the excuses. It's mandatory. But they have chose to associate with themselves with that structure, and therefore they will face the just judgment. Praises the king. Noted the battle is already won. It's Glassy Ajah, Glassy Fire.